Think positive, count your blessings, look on the bright side. How many times have you heard that from someone trying to cheer you up despite a bad day? Well, it's annoying, and we're here to say it must stop. Susan David is a psychologist on the faculty of Harvard Medical School, whose book Emotional Agility is changing the way people look at negative feelings. It turns out they're not only not bad for you, they are important. I recently sat down with Susan to discuss the happiness guilt society is placing upon us. Watch this. Susan, welcome. Thank you. You say that we are right now experiencing a tyranny of positivity. Absolutely. Explain that. Being positive has become a new kind of moral correctness. If you are having a bad day, you need to just put on a smile. If you are an angry woman, you need to stop being so angry. If you are a boy, boys don't cry. And so there's this way that we are dealing with normal, natural emotions by somehow making them good or bad. And this is not serving us. It's not serving our resilience. It's not serving the way we parent. And not being able to handle our emotions impacts every aspect mm -hmm. of how we they're love. going to come. They're they going come to come out. I know you say in the book that you try to suppress something, it comes back twofold, like when you want the chocolate cake that's sitting in the refrigerator. We all know that experience where there's a delicious piece of chocolate cake in the fridge and you are on diet, and so you try not to think about it, and you dream about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's in my head. So when we try to push aside difficult emotions, it might be I'm unhappy in my job, or it might be... I'm really struggling in this relationship, or it might be I'm experiencing harassment. When we push these emotions aside, they come back, they come back stronger, and we struggle to navigate them effectively. And this impacts us in real ways. You say discomfort is the price of admission for a meaningful life. I love that. Discomfort is the price of admission for a meaningful life. Explain Again, that. we live in a space that tells us we've got to be positive. And yet so much of our growth comes from when we are experiencing discomfort, when we are going to new places, mm -hmm. when we are trying new things in our interactions with people. And so it's only when we open ourselves up to discomfort, and that might be fear, it might be the pain that we're experiencing, mm -hmm. so much of our joy ultimately comes through being able to be okay with these difficult emotions and instead of just think, pushing them aside. I think success is rooted in it too. I mean, I always say to the young journalists who come to me wanting to know, how can I get your job? I say, go out there and live. You know, get your heart broken, break somebody else's heart, take risks, fail, yeah. make mistakes, embrace all those experiences so that there's something inside of you for people to connect to. Who can connect to somebody who's all like, hee, hee, all the time? That's not real. <laughs> You know, you don't get to have a meaningful career. You don't get to raise a family. You don't get to leave the world a better place without some stress and discomfort. So we have a couple of, like, key strategies for people Absolutely. on how to do this, okay? What's the first? Sometimes we forget the most simple strategy, which is to be compassionate with ourselves, to recognize that all of us, we are all doing the best we can with who we are, with what we've got, with the resources that we've been given in life. Self-compassion. Actually, my New Year's resolution, remember this, was be more forgiving of myself. It's, so it's, far, it's not working, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue. What's number two? It's so important. It's so important. The second is we can notice our emotions and also have space between us and our emotions. For instance, instead of saying something like, I am guilty, you know, I am a bad mom, I'm noticing that I'm feeling guilty. I'm feeling, I'm feeling, not yeah. I am. I am makes you the emotion. Yeah. Whereas when you say, I'm noticing that I'm feeling guilty, what does it say about you? It says that you want to be a present and connected parent. So your emotions actually signpost your values and, and you can take action accordingly. And the last one, the last key is what? So often we say things like, I'm stressed or I'm guilty. We use very big, broad brushstrokes to describe how we're feeling. Whereas your stress might be, actually, I'm in the wrong job, or I'm disappointed, or I'm truly feeling overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. What we know from the research is when we do this very simple strategy of labeling our emotions more effectively, it actually activates the readiness potential in our brains and helps us to make goals and take action in ways that are concordant with our values. Do these things and you will pursue a lifelong correspondence with your own heart. 
That's what she writes. Susan, that is beautiful. Well said. Thank you. It's a great book. Thank you. All the best. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.